Welcome to part two, everyone. And, well, this is it. Numbers 10 through 1. Now, if you haven't seen part 1 yet, um, link for it will be in the description below. If you don't care about what 20 through 11 was, at least watch the beginning so you have a little bit of context before you watch this video. So with that, that being said, let's continue. Alright, coming in at number 10 is Dunces and Dragons. I went over this episode in my second um, post-movie best list, and I still think it's really good, and obviously it's one of my favorites. So, SpongeBob and Patrick are just running around, they come across this place called Medieval Times, and they go inside it and uh, start having a little bit of fun, like Patrick is having some mutton, and then they uh, are selected to do jousting, although that backfires because they get thrown off their seahorses. And apparently also thrown back in time because they're also uh, mistaken as witches and thrown in jail. Where they meet this guy named Squidly who looks an awful lot like Squidward and they also mistake him for Squidward. And Squidly says, you know, how he was the royal fool, sings a nice song, and also uh, they f figure out that there's also a dragon that's kind of destroying the village, and Spongebob and Patrick realize that uh, they've gone back in time. And then the king wants to talk to Spongebob and Patrick, but they won't go without Squidly, and they make up some sort of excuse. And the king is Mr. Krabs, and it's Princess Pearl and also King Krabs. So Spongebob and Patrick come in, and Spongebob thinks it's Mr. Krabs, but it's not. And then they try to impress the king with uh, some sort of act, courtesy of Squidly, and um, they almost get their heads cut off. But then it turns out there was some sort of prophecy, Pearl points this out, that two warriors fall from the sky and have to defeat the one-eyed wizard, being Plankton. And then the dragon captures Pearl, and Cra King Krabs tells the three to go rescue her. And along the way they get some armor, and also... Planktonomore, the villain, is watching over them in his crystal orb. Oh, and Spongebob also brought Krabby Pays along, just for a snack. And he's holding Pearl above a cauldron of lava, and he'll burn Pearl if he's not given the throne, and, well, basically Krabs land. So, they get to Planktonomore's place, but then come the Dark Knight. No... Not that dark knight. There, 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 this dark knight. Who is a medieval Sandy and Spongebob kicks her ass with karate. And then they become friends with Sandy and get into the castle. And then they uh, fight Planktonomore. They get Pearl out, but they have to deal with the dragon. And they win the dragon's trust with the Patties. Planktonomore is defeated. Everything is happy, but... Squidly's terrible clarinet playing that irritates the townspeople, and Spongebob and Patrick are thrown off their seahorses again. They're uh, back in the arena, but Squidly's also there. So, did they really go back in time, or what? This episode is just really funny, and the ending, it makes you think. In, kind of in the same way as a Shyamalan movie. A good one, anyway. And just, it's... Pretty freaking entertaining and one of the better post-movie episodes. Here's something I discovered one time when I was watching this episode. Replace the word hooks with drugs. It, it, it'll make sense later. So Spongebob and Squidward are at the Krusty Krab and Spongebob is rolling around cleaning the floors and then Mr. Krabs comes in screaming about the hooks! The hooks are here! And trying to warn people. And then he tells Spongebob about the dangers of the hooks and that they'll cling on to you and drag you higher, higher, and higher until you're up to the surface gasping for air. And then they cook you. And then they eat you. Or worse, they put you in a gift shop. Spongebob is terrified, but Mr. Krabs assures him that if he listens to what he said, then, you know, Spongebob will be fine. And later on during the day, Spongebob is making Krabby Patties, and Patrick comes and he tells Spongebob that the carnival is in town. 
And, well, SpongeBob goes with him and, well, just says that he's taking a break. And then they go and, well, it's just a bunch of hooks, actually. And SpongeBob realizes that, well, he done goofed and tells Patrick that Mr. Krabs told him to stay away from those things. And, well, apparently they're covered in cheese and Patrick eats a bunch of cheese off the hooks with some disturbing images. Oh. And then, right as Patrick's about to eat the cheese off another hook, he gets dragged up. But then he floats back down. And him and SpongeBob have a bit of fun with those hooks. They go up high. See where I'm going with this? And meanwhile, the Krusty Krab, well, the food kind of sucks. And Squidward's burning them, of course. Krabs comes in and is mad at Squidward. He's wondering what's going on, and... Squidward tells Mr. Krabs that Spongebob went on his break, and Mr. Krabs goes out to find Spongebob and finds him and Patrick messing around with hooks and warns them, and also tells them about being in a can of tuna with nothing to look forward to but the smell of mayonnaise. And that scares the both of them, but the next day, while Spongebob is going to work, Patrick tries to get him to do the hooks again. When... Spongebob tells Patrick that, you know, this is wrong, Mr. Krabs, and that Patrick says that Mr. Krabs is just a big dummy. Nothing bad happened to them all day because, well, they played on them all day. Patrick goes and plays with the hooks, and then Spongebob is trying not to play with the hooks, and then all of a sudden he comes near this hook. He tries not to give in to temptation, but does anyway, but he gets hooked. And panics, runs to the Krusty Krab, and there Mr. Krabs is uh, serving some water to Pearl and her friends. And SpongeBob comes, and it's revealed that he's hooked. Mr. Krabs tells SpongeBob to take off his pants because, well, they're hooked into his pants. But SpongeBob doesn't want to in front of Pearl and her friends, but he does anyway. But then he's in his underwear, but the f he's still hooked with his underwear. And then, while Spongebob's getting dragged away, uh, his underwear rips and, well, his naked body is exposed to Pearl and her friends. And it turns out Squidward did that to him to teach Spongebob a lesson about the hooks. And the episode ends. You know, this episode's got a bit of a subtle drug reference, and, you know, not bad. At least it didn't shove some down our throats like fucking Captain Planet or something along those lines. What's next? Pizza delivery. It's closing time at the Krusty Krab, and, well, suddenly the phone rings, and Squidward answers it and tells the person that Krusty Krab's closed, and Mr. Krab swipes the phone, and instead of telling him, Don't we deliver! Don't we deliver! This is no pizza place! We don't deliver! He and Mr. Krabs instead says, Pizza? Of course we've got pizza! And makes a pizza out of cry pies and tells Squidward to deliver it. Squidward doesn't want to. Mr. Krabs has Spongebob come along with him. Spongebob does a quick check of the boat. I mean, it's maybe a little tedious, but it's got some funny stuff like tire pressure! And another thing to note, the, the boat that's in this scene is right-hand drive, which is strange because... They're typically on the American side. Left-hand drive, not right. I found that odd. And Squidward doesn't care, so he just has Spongebob drive, but... Well, we know Spongebob doesn't have his license, and kind of sucks at driving. And Spongebob kind of panics and backs up the boat so far that, well, they run out of gas and they're in the middle of nowhere. And also the pizza's getting cold. Old Squidward flips out and kicks the boat, and, it's, and it gets gas again and just goes without him. That's pretty hilarious. And they decide to walk on foot while singing the Krusty Krab pizza song. And then SpongeBob tries to do a hitchhike routine, which was done by the Pioneers, to get a ride from a truck, but it fails. Then the two get caught up in a twister, and luckily they don't die. And then, well... They're now even more in nowhere because they lost the road. So then Spongebob finds this rock, half of it with moss on it, the other not. Apparently moss points to civilization, but Squibber doesn't listen. And it turns out 
Civilization was that way. And then we get a montage of the Krusty Krab Pizza song being sung, and I love it. Though after a while, they get all burned out and hungry. They had to eat something, and Spongebob's trying to make sure that Squidward does not eat the pizza until they find a rock, which they drive to. <laughs> it, it's pretty hilarious. They drive to the customer's house, and they get to the door, and well... They forgot his drink, his diet Dr. Kelp, and the guy doesn't pay for it. And Squidward, you know, he's pissed off because he came all this way and now the guy won't even pay for his pizza and Spongebob is crying. So he slams the pizza in the guy's face and they go back to the Krusty Krab. But, well, the Krusty Krab was basically right next to the guy's house the whole time and Squidward's like, oh, my aching tentacles. Again, this is hilarious. It's got, you know, it's cartoonish moments. And I even like the song from it. Krusty Towers is another post-movie episode that actually made the cut. So, what's this about? SpongeBob and Squidward are going to work when they see that the Krusty Krab has been turned into a hotel. Mr. Krabs did because he spent a weekend at a fancy hotel and saw that all the nice things they could do, and that the employees uh, live by a strict code. We shall never deny, I guess, even the most ridiculous requests. Oh, and also the high prices for everything. So Mr. Krabs decided to turn the Krusty Krab into a hotel. So now Squidward and SpongeBob are bellhops, and the first customer, well... He doesn't want a room, he just wants a cry patty, and you can only get a cry patty if you have a room and order room service. So yeah, Squidward manages the front desk, and Patrick is the, well, first actual customer to stay there. Squidward has a bit of a hard time dealing with Patrick, and uh, he has to carry Patrick's bags that suddenly appeared to his room, but uh, employees can't take the regular elevator. They have to take the employee elevator, which is the stairs. Squidward is pissed off, and then Squidward has to do a bunch of other ridiculous things because, you know, the plaque, we can never deny, I guess, even the most ridiculous request. Squidward gets so fed up that he just quits and decides to stay at the hotel to give Krabs a taste of his own medicine, doing ridiculous stuff like having Krabs carrying him up the stairs, uh, cry pay with toenail clippings and nose hairs, and many other things. And it even gets to a point where Squidward wants a pool in his room. But it's so heavy, the pool that is, that it makes the whole building collapse and they're all in the hospital. And because of the high bill, Krabs decides that he'll turn the Krusty Krab into a hospital. And that Patrick, Squidward, and Spongebob are going to go to medical school and the episode ends. This is one of the few post-movie episodes to have a cartoonish nature to it for the entirety of the episode and it has all the funny moments and Squidward getting revenge on Krabs is also very nice and well appreciated. Ah, uh, idiot box. Spongebob and Patrick are waiting outside for a package that Spongebob ordered and he got a giant TV which, well, Spongebob only bought just to play in the box and him and Patrick throw the TV in the trash. The reason, because, well, they wanted to exercise their imagination. It might seem stupid at first, but they actually pulled it off. SpongeBob explains to Squidward how, what the imagination is, and that they can do anything. And Squidward also asks for the TV that SpongeBob got with the box. And the first thing Spongebob and Patrick do with their imagination in the box is to a rock climb. And, well, you hear, you know, chains and all the stuff you would hear during rock climbing. And Squidward forgot the remote outside and is hearing Spongebob and Patrick do all this stuff. But then he touches the box and there's an avalanche. He does it twice. After the second time, it turns out that <laughs> Spongebob and Patrick... Uh, needs saws to cut off their frozen limbs, and Squidward is terrified. He opens the box, and they're fine. And he's wondering how they did all those sound effects. And then SpongeBob and Patrick do stuff again, and well, there's a helicopter 
with saws on the way. <laughs> and he's still trying to figure out how they're doing that. So he decides to stay in the box and see how they do it. And he wants to go to Robot Pirate Island and arm wrestle with cowboys on the moon. While they're doing that, here's how they do it. Beep, beep, beep. Arr. Beep, boop, boop. Ahoy, matey. And it's nothing like it. Like how he was listening to it earlier, and he's still wondering how the hell they do it. Oh, and he also watched TV for a bit, and everything that was on TV was about boxes. <laughs> so, after Spongebob and Patrick are done playing in the box uh, at night, Squidward goes inside, and he thinks he figured it out. Like, he's trying to pretend to drive a race car, but it's a garbage truck taking the box, and Squidward is at the dump and well kind of failed and spongebob and patrick are like all well with the box gone like this episode is very funny and I mean, it takes a concept that probably wouldn't work i'm looking at you post movie but quite frankly it's one of the greatest episodes ever made ah the chaperone it starts off with Spongebob making a cry pay, but all of a sudden he hears Pearl crying, and Pearl is going to her dad, Mr. Krabs, and, well, Krabs is trying to calm her down, but, well, she floods the Krusty Krab with her tears, and the reason she's crying is because her boyfriend didn't want to go to her prom anymore, and now Pearl doesn't have a date, and Pearl is very upset. Mr. Krabs tries to remedy this. At first, she asks Pearl that, well, maybe, why can't I go with you? And then, well, what about Squidward? And then SpongeBob, but Pearl's like, no, not him. And then Mr. Krabs tries to get a bunch of other guys that are eating at the Krusty Krab to go with Pearl, and they all decline. So, yeah, SpongeBob's gonna go to Pearl's prom with... Pearl. And apparently that Spongebob that Mr. Krabs had was a dummy. And, well, Spongebob tells Mr. Krabs that he's a prom expert, but is a prom failure. He couldn't even get someone to go with him to his own prom. You now, wondering how he can be like Pearl's ex-girlfriend. Someone who's long, tan, and handsome. And Gary gives Spongebob a magazine for him to go off of, so Spongebob looks presentable to Pearl's prom. And when he arrives at Mr. Krabs' house, he looks pretty good. And Spongebob even got a limo! And as predicted, Spongebob does kind of screw up. Like, he screws up the picture and tr screws up getting punched for Pearl. Oh, and we also see Pearl's ex-boyfriend, who's kind of like an ugly version of those anchovies from Help Wanted. Eep. And when it comes to dancing, yeah, fail there too. <laughs> SpongeBob can't do any of the dance moves there. It was the 90s, so it, it was another time. SpongeBob is trying to make Pearl not cry, but then SpongeBob himself cries because, well, he failed. And Pearl calms him down, and they, they dance to the sponge, which... <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> gets everyone in the hospital and just kind of destroys the prom and Pearl tells Spongebob that she had a great time and Mr. Krabs is proud of Spongebob and well that was a dummy this episode is pretty funny and uh, it's not exactly how my high school prom went but I kind of wish it did you know minus everyone getting hurt at the end of course but still very funny Ah, uh, yes, the camping episode. So, it starts out with Squidward being happy that Spongebob and Patrick are going out camping over the weekend and hopes that they get lost. But, well, Spongebob and Patrick are camping about a few feet from Spongebob's house, and Squidward is, of course, annoyed by it. Spongebob and Patrick trick Squidward into going camping with them, and Squidward kind of sucks at camping, like, with his self-assembling tent. But he can't really eat outside. Like, he needs a can opener, but he has to go inside so he can eat some Swedish barnacle balls, which sound disgusting. 
Well, f- how about some music? Well, there's the Campfire Song song, which rocks. <coughs> Swerver didn't like it, so he tries to play his clarinet, but, well, you can't really do that because that attracts sea bears. And SpongeBob and Patrick name off a bunch of things that sea bears are attracted to, which Squidward does. And I do like the build up to whether or not the sea bear exists, like the Bikini Bomb Inquirer, I Married a Sea Bear, Fake Science Monthly, Sea Bears and Fairy Tales are Real. And eventually, the sea bear does come, and to protect yourself from a sea bear, you draw a circle in the ground, and you stay inside that circle. And, well, Squidward gets the shit beaten out of him by the sea bear, because, well, he pissed it off. Eventually, he gets inside the circle with Spongebob and Patrick, and he's saved, but it turns out sea bear attacks attract sea rhinos, and you need sea rhinoceros undergarments, and the episode ends. This episode is fun. It's hilarious. I like the build-up to whether or not the sea bear existed. The sea bear is hilarious. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say about this. So now, we're in the f- top three. Let's do this. Something smells. And it's not me. <laughs> Bad jokes aside, something smells... Um, it takes place on a Sunday. You know what that means? SpongeBob has a Sunday! And he goes to his freezer to get some ice cream, but no, there's nothing. Guess I'll have to use something else. Uses ketchup, onions, and an old peanut plant, which he eats. It's gonna taste great! And I guess he did, because he ate all of it, and now he's got terrible breath. And now does his usual Sunday stuff. Say hi to everyone, Bikini Bottom. And it's quite funny. He goes up to a guy, hello, and the guy is, can't, smells his breath and it smells terrible. And I would complain that SpongeBob doesn't really notice that he's uh, doing some destruction, but I mean, it's breath. I mean, r- really, the only reason the breath is drawn in this is to inform the audience that, you know, people are smelling his breath. You don't always see your breath unless it's freezing outside. So, yeah, Spongebob does do it to a guy, a male fish, and a crossing guard, and an entire parade, until he comes across Patrick, who confirms that, well, Spongebob is probably just ugly, and now Spongebob has to somehow deal with the fact that he is ugly. So, after I am ugly and I'm proud, both of them go to a movie theater where, well, rancid ugliness kind of still shows, like he kills two fish, burns someone's face off, and this classic moment right here. Excuse me, sir. I hope my horrible ugliness won't be a distraction to you. Not at all, boy! So then Spongebob's crying, and Patrick tries to calm him down, but, well, it doesn't really do it. So Patrick, you know, tries to expose when the Spongebob's ugliness, like, Look at it! Look at it! It's ugly, isn't it? You look at it! But everyone runs out of the movie theater, and they try to get more snacks, and Patrick's trying to get some, but, you know, no one's there, because they scared everyone out of the theater. So Spongebob gives Patrick some of his peanut onion sundae. Patrick eats it, and well, he has to go to the bathroom, and well, Patrick has caught the ugly. And after a while, Spongebob realizes that they just stink. And then their stench (laughs) melts the movie theater, and they find Squidward and tells him that they stink. This episode, I will say this, it could have gone downhill easily, because they are... I mean, while it is kind of oblitherous, but I, I I don't know. It just works. It's hilarious, and just what they do is funny. Oh, and nothing was incredibly grotesque. I mean, not even that Sunday. Ah, yes. Bang Geeks. Only at number two. So, the episode starts off with Squibber playing his clarinet until a doctor comes to the door and... <laughs> Says that he's got a dying animal, which is what 
Squidward's clarinet playing sounds like. And then uh, Squidward's old rival from high school, Squilliam Fancy Son, calls him and Squil says Squilliam's going to be playing in the Bubble Bowl. And, well, he's living Squidward's dream, but the problem is Squilliam can't go because of certain things, so he was hoping that Squidward and his band would be able to play. Well, to prove Squilliam is a douchebag and full of shit, Squidward says that he doesn't sell fast food and he does have a band, he'll play the Bubble Bowl. Though, of course, we all know that Squidward doesn't have that. So, he puts posters all around Bikini Bottom to recruit people, and a lot of people show up on the first night of practice, and, well, it doesn't really go well. Mostly because of the drums, and other choice moments, like when they start kicking, and Patrick gets raped by Sandy with a trombone, or whatever that's called, I'm not actually in music. And, well... <laughs> And then the Flag Twirlers, Plankton's harmonica solo, and just the last night where everyone destroys everything because, you know, we wouldn't sound so bad if some people didn't try to play with big meaty claws. And after that's when Squidward tells him how disappointed I, he was in them and just walks away crying. And Spongebob says that everyone should band together, Aha, get it, terrible pun, and, you know, be good. So, the next day, Squidward shows up, and Squilliam is there, but, you know, Squidward's band isn't. And then his band comes, and they rock out with uh, the, the amazing song, Sweet Victory, which is amazing, and the episode ends, oh, and William had a heart attack. This episode is, well, great music comedy and also a great introduction to Squilliam and, I don't know, so iconic, too. So, that just leaves us with one more episode. Drum roll, please. Drum roll. Oh, oh, uh... Yes, my number one pick is chocolate with nuts. Chocolate? Did you say chocolate? Uh, no, I don't have any chocolate. I'm just reviewing chocolate with nuts, Mike. Well then, moving on. So, the episode starts off with Spongebob being in his mailbox, waiting for the mailman, of all things, and scares the crap out of him, and, well, the mailman drops everything that he had in his hand. Patrick comes over and is wondering what Spongebob got in the mail, and Spongebob's looking through the mail, Gary, 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 and then he finds this magazine called Fancy Living Digest. He opens it up, and Spongebob and Patrick see how people live their fancy lives. Like, some guy was so rich, he had a swimming pool in a swimming pool, and another guy had shoes. But it turns out that it was Squidward's mail, and it actually got sorted incorrectly, and Squidward accuses them of stealing his mail. Spongebob and Patrick ask Squidward how those people get all the stuff that they have, Squidward tells them that they're entrepreneurs and explains what an entrepreneur is. If you don't know what an entrepreneur is, uh, people who sell stuff. So, Billy Mays, for instance. SpongeBob and Patrick decide to become entrepreneurs and try to think of something that everyone would want to buy. And after a while, they come up with selling chocolate bars. Chocolate? Did you say... Chocolate? Uh... Yes? Chocolate? Chocolate? Chocolate! 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 <laughs> 
Oh my god, I'm gonna have a heart attack from that. Moving on! So, they first stop at one guy's house, and offers him, well, you know what, and then the guy screams, CHOCOLATE! 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 <laughs> well, my doctor told me that I should take it easy for a bit, and so I can avoid the problems with you-know-what. Uh, I've got an idea. Okay. There. There. Now. Let's continue! So the fish, who, by the way, is named Tom, uh, chases after the two. The other, then Spongebob and Patrick find this other house and try to sell the guy. Though he seems to be a swindler and tricks Spongebob and Patrick into buying these little bags. <laughs> and then... Spongebob and Patrick go to another house, and it's the same guy, and he swindles the two into getting big bags. And then Spongebob and Patrick go to this one woman's house, and offers her... Uh, there's too many bags to go through, and once they actually find a bar, uh, here comes Tom, and chases the two. So, later on, Spongebob and Patrick are at a diner, wondering how the heck they're gonna sell more. Patrick has an idea that they should get naked. Spongebob says no, they should save that for when they're selling real estate. And then, Spongebob figures it out that uh, they should just be nice. So they try it on the next guy, and Patrick's like, I love you. And the guy rejects him. Spongebob tries the same guy and, well, he just tells him what they're selling, but the guy rejects because apparently he turns to sugar and has sugar, and sugar turns to bubbling fat. And this is proved by Patrick. And the guy also sells Patrick a bunch of pictures from when he was fat. And the two are depressed, and they come across this one billboard for barnacle chips, and it says that eat barnacle chips, they're delicious, but they're apparently not delicious, yet they sell millions of bags a day. And, well, if they didn't stretch the truth, then they wouldn't sell as many, so the two decide to stretch the truth, and they try it on this, uh, old lady. They're like, hello, young lady, we're selling. Is your mother home? And then the old lady's mom is still alive. She's like, what? What do you want? You just can't wait for me to die, can't you? And then they argue for a bit until uh, her mom discovers that this salad and remedies about uh, when was invented and that she hated it. And SpongeBob and Patrick lie and say that, you know, you rub it on your skin, you'll live forever. And they keep doing this for a while until... They come to this one house, all bandaged up with crutches and whatnot. And then this guy, who is in a full body cast and has an oxygen mask on, comes out and, well, uh, says that every morning he breaks his arms, and every afternoon he breaks his legs, and at night he lies awake in agony until his heart attacks put him to sleep. And SpongeBob and Patrick help him in, and, well ask the guy what they can do to help him, and he says that uh, they can sell because, well, his medical bills are high, but it turns out it's the swindler guy. Again.
So, SpongeBob and Patrick are carrying a bunch of crates, and, well, they're like, you know what, forget about it. Let's just change our names to Why and Bother. And then Tom comes, screaming. And SpongeBob and Patrick are pleading for mercy. And he's like, finally, I've been trying to catch you boys all day. Now that I've got you right where I want you, I'd like to buy all your... Patrick shits out a bunch of stuff, and the two melt. SpongeBob's like, thank you for your patronage. And they've got a wheelbarrow full of money, and they're thinking of how to spend it. And they spend it at the uh, fancy place, which is a ship in a glass bottle. And they took the two old hags with them. So yeah, this episode, I why do I love it so much? It's funny, it's iconic. Uh... This, and, you know, I don't know what else to say. So yeah, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this, and... CHOCOLATE! 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 I made it. I got away from them. Chocolate. Thank you for your patronage.